So today we're going to explore an idea about how to create an infinite level. And so this game that we're making is going to look kind of like Star Fox, but it's also going to be somewhat of an endless runner would be the category that it's in. And I left the zoom out so you could see what was happening. It's generating a new segment of map each time you get close. Um, you can even when you go fast, it doesn't really matter what speed you're going, but whenever you get within a certain distance, it'll generate a new section. Now, obviously, in a real game, this section would be generated farther out where you couldn't see it being generated. That way you would never notice. But I wanted you to see what's happening is each chunk is made while you are flying uh, closer to it. Now, typically, in Endless Runner, I would delete the ones behind. Uh, I'm not going to do that today just because it was getting some errors. Uh, it works in 2D pretty well, but I, I couldn't figure out what was going on with it in 3D. So the basic structure is going to be just a game node, spatial node, that we have as the root of the node. And we're going to, I just like having a container for the ground. Uh, because I probably will have more than one grid map before this is over for uh, different types of structures that I want to have in the world. And also maybe if I want to change to a different style of ground or something like that, I want to just have a container to be able to put my grid map in. And then I also have a player. Now I've gone over multiple movements. I just suggest picking a style of movement that moves continuously in one direction. And the only real difference I had in the player script that I'd have to mention is I had to turn the player 180 degrees around the Y axis. So um, the Y rotational degrees will be 180. And I did that in the script to make sure it's always pointing the right way. Uh, go ahead and play around with that. If you have any questions, just let me know. But before we get going on this ground, um, so I made a mesh library, which I just wanted to point out. Uh, you just make a grid, a grid map node, and you add a mesh. And I made mine 10 by 2 by 10. And then you go ahead and just add a convex static body. And one other thing I want to point out is if you change the material here, you, you will get frustrated and it won't actually stick to it. When you make a mesh library, make sure you click the mesh and set the material inside the mesh. That way it's retained uh, when you export it as a mesh library and bring it into your game. Again, if you change the material here, it will not transfer that information when you turn it into a mesh library. And you turn it into a mesh library just by saying convert to mesh library. You save it. You come over here to your other grid map and you put that mesh library that you saved right here. And then, so in our script to create this ground, uh, we just have a ground size. Uh, and this is just going to be how big of a chunk we're going to make. And uh, Basically, we're going to keep track of when we need to trigger the next chunk to be made. And I just called these on ready variables. So when you call the same node over and over again, it's better to just put it in a variable. That way you only tell the computer to look it up once and it can reference it quicker. So we're just going to create a chunk right at the beginning. And we're just going to pass it a uh, chunk width and chunk length. And we will loop through it. And at random, pick a number between 0 and 1. And then we will set the cell item. Now, in 2D, I think it's just called set cell. And in 3D, you have to set cell item. Uh, like I said, map just refers to world and ground, so I'm going to this grid map. So you put the first three variables are the x, y, and z, and we're never changing the y, so I just put that to zero. Um, but basically, I just want to go 
and loop through every single tile in a 20 by 20 square on the ground and set it to either 0 or 1. If you look in the mesh library, you can see how this is the grass is 0 and 1, and that's what you're setting it to. And then we move the trigger spot forward the length of the chunk that we just made. So if I change that chunk size up to 40, you'll be able to see that you won't be, I mean, it'll be farther out there, and we'd probably just dial the, the camera back. But, and it looks like it's infinite ground, and we'll add some structures and some things to dodge, and we'll add some enemies in the next few videos. Obviously, you would make this a little bit more interesting than just two colors or just big squares. I just thought it was a very clear way to show you how you can randomize what's going on. Hopefully we can get some procedural generation to make some nicer shapes to see, and we'll get some uh, other structures in here also.